So I think the writing's on the wall, and I'm going to make a prediction here. I do think we are about to be involved. We already are involved, but I think we're going to be pretty heavily involved in a World War III scenario. Uh, it really kind of looks that way. All the propaganda in the media is sort of leading us toward that. You can see it. You know, somebody like me who's been watching this stuff with a keen eye, not only just the Ukraine thing, but just how the media acts and how politicians act and, you know, some of the rhetoric they use before they go on to announce like a, an initiative or, or a new part of the agenda. That's what that's what they're gearing up toward. You have Democrats and Republicans uh, both giving Zelensky a standing ovation today when he spoke to the U.S. Congress, demanding the U.S. be more involved in the war in Ukraine, demanding things like a no-fly zone. He got some of what he wanted. He got almost a billion dollars. I think so far it will be about a billion dollars of your taxpayer funds to help support a foreign country uh, like Ukraine that is being invaded by Russia right now. So, yeah, with all this going on, it really doesn't look good because you have the tough talk coming from China now as well saying that, you know, what, what is the U.S. doing and what, what are they doing with these bio labs that the Russia is talking about and that the U.S. media is denying? What's really going on here? Because there's a lot of smoky things and they're kind of taking Russia's side. You, you saw previous meetings with uh, Xi and, and, and Putin. Um, you know, there seems to be a very close relationship between Russia and China. And then, of course, Iran would probably somehow fit in there. And then, you, so you might have like two world uh, alliances forming here. And, and really, this is all part of the plan. This is something I've talked about for a long time. You know, the best way to create a new world order or a great reset is to really have a World War III type of situation happen. And yeah, the global leaders in this planet, um, they have various forms where they gather. Uh, throughout the years, you had the Bilderberg Group, you had the World Economic Forum, you have the UNs. A lot, this is all open. None of this is secret or anything. And a, a long time, a lot of these uh, globalist types that were involved uh, in philanthropy and you know funding politicians and political movements and, and, and you know the universities, all of this throughout the, you know the the U.S. and, and the West and, and the entire world. A lot of the people who control the, the, the world, they want a great reset. So this is something I've been talking about for a while. Uh, but anyway, so let's talk about what um, what Zelensky said to the U.S. Congress today. It's pretty astounding. I'm going to read out of NPR here, and we're just going to go through it, and then we're going to talk about how, how the media is lying about everything that you're seeing. I, I mean, it's just... It's nonstop. I can't even believe that we're really talking about World War III like this is a good idea. And it's just, they're pulling at the heartstrings of Americans. And this is out of NPR. They say, Ukrainian President Zelensky delivered an impassioned plea to the U.S. Congress on Wednesday morning for additional support for President Biden to spearhead the world's defense of Ukraine. While Zelensky delivered the majority of his speech in Ukrainian with an English interpreter, he ended his remarks, which were delivered via video link in English, addressing Biden directly. You are the leader of the nation, he says, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being a leader of the world means to be a leader of peace, right? Because peace means to start World War III, because that's effectively what it would mean for the U.S. to, you know, engage in a no-fly zone in Ukraine, for instance. Biden responded, uh, responded just hours later, thanking Zelensky for his address and pledging uh, to send an additional $800 million to Ukraine to boost security measures. This in addition to $200 million in military aid to Ukraine Biden sent on Sunday. Wednesday's aid package includes 800 anti-aircraft systems, 9,000 shoulder-mounted anti-armor missile systems to destroy tanks, 7,000 small arms, including guns and grenade launchers, 20 million rounds of ammunition, and drones. Boys, drones are pretty expensive. I, I mean, I don't know. Like, I get it. We're supposed to feel bad for, for Zelensky. We're supposed to feel bad 
for Ukraine uh, because that is the new comp computer software that's been installed into the mass media uh, propaganda apparatus. Um, but drones, really? Uh, I mean, like, it's your it's your money, guys. It's your money. But fit fine. Hey, you, you want your money to go toward, you know, killing Russians? Oh, fine, I guess, you know. Uh, a senior... U.S. military officials said later that he, uh, that, that the material will include 100 drones. Asked, asked if the drones were for surveillance or would be uh, armed, the official said they were intended to quote unquote deliver a punch, right? So, uh, you know, they go on to talk about the shipments and all this. Here we go. Zelensky's address included a video with a graphic, with graphic war zone footage. In pleading for the U.S. to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine, Zelensky on Wednesday morning showed during his speech a video of the violence happening throughout his country. It featured graphic footage of injured and dead civilians weeping and screaming people of all ages, hospital patients, and destroyed buildings. It ended showing the words, close the sky, the sky over Ukraine. So they want to... Uh, establish a no-fly zone in Ukraine. That's what Zelensky is pushing for. And, you know, this is part of the strategy of Ukraine fighting the Russians right now there. So it's actually a brilliant strategy. What Ukraine's doing, what Zelensky effectively is doing, is he's stationing much of his uh, anti-aircraft uh, artillery and a lot of his troops in civilian populated areas, like in projects and stuff like that. So th the Russians are sort of forced to respond in a way that would effectively kill civilians, you know, with collateral damage. So it, it's his sort of strategy to say, see, look how many civilians they're killing here. And then to point toward that and to get other nations like the United States that have better militaries to come and help him, that have more money and are more capable to come and help him. So this is kind of like very manipulative. I don't know. Like, like don't get me wrong. If, like, Putin were being invaded by somebody much stronger than him, I think he would probably do the same thing. You know, this is a very much a propaganda war. And um, you got to remember, a lot of the stuff you see out of Ukraine right now, it, it's – don't trust any of it. Don't trust any of it, whether it's pro-Russian or pro-Ukrainian. Like, don't trust it. Guys, when two nations are at war – or two groups of nations are at war, the amount of propaganda, the lengths that these nations will go to, to lie to the people to try to get their side uh, more support or, or try to moisture like the, you know, a, um, a sense of camaraderie amongst their own people or to inspire their own soldiers or, you know, the people on their side or just make the other guy look like, you know, Satan incarnate, they'll do anything. And it's just obvious, right? I mean, you almost can't blame each side that are in a, a serious conflict, uh, you can't blame them for, if, if it's all out, you know, if it's like for the su survival of the nation, it's understandable that you're just going to have propaganda. I'm no fan of it. I wouldn't participate in it. I'm just saying it's understandable. These are governments, guys. I mean, come on. It's the military. Military, really? They, of course, they're going to lie to people and stage things and do all kinds of stuff to voice or whatever kind of narrative they want in the media, or they want it said to the people, right? So Zelensky did, uh, they, they go on to say here further in NPR, Zelensky did acknowledge the White House's hesitancy on imposing a no-fly zone and ask for additional aircraft military assistance instead. We, all, we offer an, an alternative, Zelensky said. You know what kind of defense systems we need, S-300 and other similar systems. You know how much uh, it depends on the battlefield on the ability to use aircraft, powerful, strong air aviation to protect our people, our freedom, and our land, blah, 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 blah. He's like, you know what we need, guys. We need S-300s. Ah, uh, yeah. You see? Um, and then, then Zelensky went on to cite key moments in American history to pull up the heartstrings of the U.S. Congress, right? He goes on to allude to the I Have a Dream speech from Martin Luther King, actually saying, quote, I have a dream, but these words are known to each of you. Today I can 
Say I have a need, a need to protect our skies. He's a salesman, boys. He's a salesman. Um, and then, of course, NPR goes on to state that, you know, there's a death toll of c civilians. There's a death toll of Ukrainian soldiers. There's um, this, that, and the other. Children. Of course, they're going to, you know, use all of these things because the media is totally on board. They want what guys got okay, over and over again. We've seen throughout the past, well, five centuries at least, not centuries, decades, <laughs> that the media is always on the side of war. Just always. Always, always, always. I mean, it, it, it doesn't see left or right either. It doesn't matter if it's leftist or, or right-wing media. And it's the same thing in Congress, by the way. So you can see here, Zelensky's speech fired up U.S. lawmakers to act on Ukraine. Zelensky's video appearance was greeted with a standing ovation from the crowded room of U.S. lawmakers. After the speech, lawmakers from both parties rallied around the Ukrainian president's emotional plea for support. There you go. And so this is what I'm talking about. This is very, very concerning. Uh, I mean, is anyone else concerned that we're literally about to like start World War III? I think Ukraine should just surrender. Uh, honestly, like the, the, we've had enough. And all of this propaganda as well coming from the media that you know, Russia is winning, guys, it's a lot. I mean, Russia is losing. It's lies, right? Russia is obviously winning the war, right? Why Why else would Zelensky be pleading, asking U.S. Congress to establish a no-fly zone in Ukraine? Why can't they do it if they're winning? Like, uh, it's just the most obvious thing. But the media will just go on to say that that um, um, Ukraine's somehow winning. I don't, yeah, right. Come on. Come on, guys. So you know the, the propaganda is strong when you have Biden getting TikTokers, the top TikTokers in the world, in, in the Western world, to address their followers and giving them like talking points to, you know, tell people what's going on in Ukraine, of course, from the Biden administration, uh, from the Biden administration's perspective. Yeah, this is just, uh, you know, classic propaganda. Um... I don't even know what else to tell you here. It, it, it's kind of like, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's pretty, it's, it's pretty straightforward, you know. It's, it's an organized effort to put out a certain narrative to people. Uh, you know, this is very manipulative, guys. And you know that the writing's on the wall, that there is an agenda here. When, when they're going to these lengths to do this, when both parties are giving Zelensky a standing ovation when he's asking for a no-fly zone, uh, I, th this is very concerning. I don't know about you. Like, are you guys concerned? Is anybody else like, wait a minute, we're, nuclear war? Are we really going to do this? Are we really going to do this? I don't know. Like, is it worth it? Why doesn't Ukraine just surrender? This is stupid. Like, let them fight the war. If they lose, surrender. They should just surrender right now so less people die. I, I mean, I, am I, I don't know. <laughs> Call me crazy. Like, seriously. Like, uh, do we really think the Russians are going to, like, start slaughtering everybody if, if they surrender? Guys, what Putin wants to do is he wants to install his puppet stupid president in, in Ukraine so he can control what Ukraine does, right? So it's not a threat to his country. I don't approve of what Putin's doing, but I understand what he, where he's coming from. And and so this is, this is just like, I just hope nobody gets hurt, really. And I understand there's innocent civilians probably getting killed in Ukraine by the Russian military. It's sad. And I don't I don't support it. And I'm, I'm totally against it. But you know what? I don't think the United States should be getting involved. Um, so by the way, like I said before, don't believe anything you see about what's going on there. The footage, all of this. George Orwell, Orwell wrote about when um, he witnessed many things during the Spanish Civil War that he would see the media publish totally fake stories, that uh, battles that never happened or just not report on battles that did happen and making up like just, you know, heroes that, that didn't fight and then totally forgetting about or discrediting people who did fight with honor and glory. So this is the type of, 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 of propaganda you will see 
out of uh, wars. It's just part of, you know, the, the formula of, of what goes on in a war. And people don't realize that. Like the fog of war, most people are just like computer programs, right? They're, they're just, or computers installed with software. They just, they just regurgitate what they're fed in the media, right? And they don't understand that it's really propping up a certain narrative. And a lot of it is just made up. Like, for instance, you had the great lie of the first Gulf War, which it came out that, first of all, what got us into the Gulf War was like a testimony from this woman um, named Nayera, who described how Iraqi troops were killing babies in incubators. And then it came out later on that that story that she gave testimony for in 1990, she appeared uh, in front of the uh, Congressional Human Rights Caucus on Capitol Hill. She said that they were killing babies in incubators in Iraq, that Saddam Hussein was doing that, and that is what justified in the minds of the, the Congress of the United States, but also the United States citizens, war in, in, in Iraq during the Gulf War. That's what justified the whole thing. Came out, the story was totally made up. Wasn't real. Wasn't real. 